uh, Stephen Petrina, who is a colleague in the uh, Department of Curriculum Studies and the Faculty of Education here at UBC, who's done a lot of very interesting work on technology and education. And he's a colleague of mine on the Faculty Association Executive. Both of us are members of the Faculty Association Executive. And I'd like to introduce and welcome Stephen to say a few words of welcome to, in, in context. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Well, I guess for those who teach chemistry in this wing, they, the teachers probably say to their students, you know, showing up is 90% of the course. <laughs> if, you can, if you can find this place, um, you've got 90% of your mark. I want to say welcome, and I'm just going to say I have a few comments to, to I guess, respond to some of the implications that have, that have arisen be, because of the strike and some of the on, here on campus and some of the implications that, that arose during the strike here on campus. So I have just a few words, and, and then we'll move on to, to the other speakers, okay? So uh, two weeks ago, on October 27th, the UBC Faculty Association passed a motion to contribute $5,000 to the Federation of Post-Secondary Educators Feed the Teachers Fund. This was one way of responding to Madam Justice Brown's decision to freeze the BCTF's assets. This motion was the final item of business in a fairly heated meeting. Afterwards, though, I had to laugh. Immediately after the, ve the vote and the motion was passed, a young faculty member stood up and steamed out, grumbling that this is, a this is a professional association, guys. And the insinuation was that professional associations do not get involved in political activism. Okay, or worse, that professionals should not be political activists or union-oriented. Now, of course, this plays into pre Premier Campbell's sense of the professional in British Columbia at this point in time. But the liberals want to play on both sides of the equation, right? They remove the sense of professional autonomy and self-governance that teachers ought to have in a profession and designated teaching as an essential service, thereby removing the right to job action or activism that teachers have in a union. Hence, we are forced to make a false choice between for professionalism and political activism, okay? Professionals don't act this way, is what we heard over and over and over since the liberals designated education as an essential service in 2001. Now, of course, this inference that activism or unionism and professionalism are incompatible goes back quite a ways, and at least back to the years when Larry King was president of the BCTF in the 1980s, okay? So this roundtable was convened to address the implications of, British, of the British Columbia teachers' strike, the longest provincial-wide strike in BC history. And besides the fact that the strike broke the pattern of passive acceptance of unilateral imposed contracts, it did that, as an astute teacher put it, and besides the fact that the strike woke up and galvanized the labor movement in BC, it did that, and placed the realities of working and learning conditions in public education on every front page and dinner table, it did that. In addition to this, the strike demonstrated that we can be and we have to be professionals and political activists at the same time. We do not have to accept the false choice that Gordon Campbell is giving us. So if you thought this strike was only about working and learning conditions for students and teachers, which it was, you missed an important point. As our BCTF president, Ginny Sims, reminded us about the strike, this is a political protest. She said, sometimes some laws are just so bad that you have to stand up and say, no, we're not going to accept that. She said, we are taking a stand against a law that is so unjust that it attacks rights that people in Canada have fought for for years and years. And that's one of the things that the teachers and the BCTF taught us. So on behalf of the sponsors and organizers of this event, I want to say welcome, and I'll turn it back over to Charles, who will introduce Ginny. Thank you.